Good morning. Hi, Allie. Hi, Jaden. Good morning, Stephen. <laughs> you guys made it. We weren't sure this morning, as you can imagine. It's hard to predict who would be able to come with all the snow. How, how tall was the snow, do you think? Allie, how much snow do you think we got last night? Can you use your arms? What do you think? This About this much? Okay, great. Well, can you do what I do just like this? Can you do what I do just like this? Can you do what I do just like this? Can you do what I do just like this? Can you do what I do just like this? Can you do what I do just like this? Well, this morning, the church changed colors. What do we see a lot of color around here? A lot of purple, that's right. I think it's very noticeable once you walk in. We have purple on the flowers, purple on the pulpit there. We have purple here. It's quite a color change. Well, I have a question. What do you think this is? I'm going to show you a picture, and I'm wondering what you think this is, okay? What do you think this is? A church. How do you know that? What if I asked you, what is this? A house. And this one? A church. Oh, that's quite an architectural difference between the two. Oh, so yes, I think a lot of people would say house for this. And what's very interesting is a lot of people, just like you said, Ali, would call this one a church. And so today I just want to talk a little bit about in this season of Lent where you saw all this color purple, there's one big focus we have during Lent. And it's exactly the difference between a cross and a house, or uh, sorry, a church and a house. And that is a cross is a very, very interesting symbol. And so I want to show you some pictures of different kinds of crosses, all right? Ali, let's see. We're going to have some, several different kinds of crosses. Oh, Jaden's going to watch, too. He's going to crawl around a little bit, too. Well, some churches in Lent will put their cross very special. Ours is very hard to reach, so I don't think we'll be doing that. But many churches during Lent will put a purple cloth around it. I'm going to say a little bit more about that one. But I want to show you five or six different examples of crosses. This past Wednesday, actually, people had many crosses. On Ash Wednesday, one of the things we do is we put a cross on different people's forehead. And so just this past Wednesday night, many church members are here, you know, 50 or 60, and then we all had a cross on our forehead. Well, this one is a necklace. Some people like to wear a cross around their neck as well. Oh, here's a cross just in the middle of a busy downtown, just a cross sitting on a building there. Now, some crosses are very, very little too. And some people have this to help them pray, and they have different beads around a little necklace. And then some crosses are huge, too. This one's in Spain. I'm not sure if you can see. That's the height of a person right there. And that's the size of that cross in Spain. So all around the world in different places, you can see crosses. And if I were to go back to the cross I showed you, this one, This one is actually meant to be a little bit ugly. There's something in the middle that's a very painful, hurtful thing that some people might use. Sort of this round thing that's very spiky and would hurt someone to put on. And this purple robe also describes Jesus' suffering. The cross, why is the cross so important to Christians? Well, the cross reminds us that Jesus went through some very, very difficult things and suffered. So in some ways, we could say crosses are... Very difficult and ugly things, but I want to show you one more cross that's very, very different than this one. If this one is a bit ugly, then later on, some churches will put beautiful flowers all over a cross, too. This is actually from Antipochus Church. Well, and they turn a very ugly cross into a very, very beautiful thing. And that's really what Lent is about, understanding how ugly the cross can be and what Jesus did for us. But one day, we'll also remember that the cross ends up God turning into a very beautiful, wonderful thing as well. So we're going to learn more about that, but let's pray together, all right? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you that you went to the cross for us. Even though the cross is such a bad and terrible thing, you turned it into something beautiful for us. Please forgive our sins and help us to love you 100%. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks, children. Next, we'll have our scripture readings. And just a reminder, as we begin our Lent preaching series, each psalm that we will read over the next five weeks be about. Yeah.